Hi guys, this is March from Painting with March, and we're here doing our gnome via a recording instead of face to face due to the coronavirus um, situation that we are having right now. I hope that you are able to follow along, and if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. I would be very happy to answer any of your any of your questions. So, as you can see. This is a little different than what we've done other gnomes in the past. I have decided to go ahead and prep your canvases with the tracing of the gnome. And I'm doing that first because it'll be easier on you. And also I want his hat to be very bright compared to other projects we've worked on. So we're gonna start with the background and you'll be getting in your packet some cerulean blue, some titanium white, some burnt umber, some yellow. You will be getting other colors as well, but I want to start with the background. So that's all I'm going to put on my palette for now as we work through the project. Since you have all the paints in front of you, you'll be able to add them as you need them. I would not take them out prior to that so they do not dry out. That way you can go at your own pace and you don't end up wasting paints if you have to stop what you're doing, take a break, and then come back. So we'll talk about the brushes as we need them, but we are going to start off with this number 14 flat brush. It is much smaller than what we're used to working with. Um, simply because we want to be able to go around the edges carefully and not go over. All right, so this guy is going to be a little different. We're going to wait, um, wet our, our brush, and we are going to pull a little bit of the blue towards the middle of our plate. And it's, as you can see, it is very, very bright. We want to pull in some white to lighten that up just a bit. To that, we're gonna pull in just a little bit of the burnt umber, just a little bit to tone it down. And we're gonna add just a little bit of yellow to Give it a little bit of greenish tint. We don't want to mix it all together. We want it to be streaky. So we're gonna load up our brush and we are going to start very, very lightly. We don't want this to be perfect. We want this to be streaky. So we're gonna start painting in our background. As you can see, some of it actually looks a bit like clouds mixed in there, which is sort of the effect that we want to be creating right now. We don't want things to be all one straight color. We want to make this easy for ourselves. So we're gonna keep on and just keep painting. If you need to turn your canvas around or bring it over, by all means do that. And notice how I am very, very lightly just taking my brush and doing small strokes. Now what you want to do also, if it gets a little too dry and you're not covering your canvas, just wet it just a little bit. And you want to also do your sides, top and sides, as you work your way down the, um, the canvas. At any point, feel free to pause your video so you can catch up. We want to be very careful going around our traceable so you can just outline him with your brush on its side or its heel. At any point you feel like you need to change brushes, be my guest. 
and then just very carefully work around the outline of your gnome. And if you want to do that first, that works too. Whatever you feel comfortable doing, just take your time working through him. Some of this we probably are going to bring down anyway, but just put a little bit there. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you've taken classes with me before, you know that I talk about the ugly stage. Acrylic painting is the process of adding layers of paint. And when you start at that bottom layer, maybe the first and second layers, they're going to be, it's going to look ugly. So that is known as the ugly stage. Many times the ugly stage wants to fight your brain. Don't let it. Just work through it and it will all come together later on. So don't get discouraged by how it looks. So remember, we want this to be not perfect because we want it to be a little streaky to give illusions of clouds. Okay, forget the sides. I'm going to keep painting the sides and just take your time and work your way down. I am going to speed up this process and I will see you when I'm done with this background.
right. So we've done mostly a very rough sky. We're going to rinse our brush. Take your paper towel. Wipe it off. All right, so the next brush that you have is a filbert. This is a number eight filbert. And we're just going to rough in some clouds. So the easiest way to do that is take your brush and put it in your white just a little bit, not a whole lot. We want these to be very, very light and fluffy. You're going to put your brush let me see if I can zoom in here just a little bit. All right. So we're zoomed in a little bit. You're going to put your brush on flat. And you want to load the brush very lightly with a little of your white. And the easiest way to do little clouds is to just take your brush and just roll it on the canvas. We just want a few wispy clouds and they don't have to be all perfect in shape because clouds are not perfect in shape. Add a little bit more paint. We don't want a whole lot and then just do wispy little clouds. Just a few. Put some down here. And as you can see it blends in well with the background we've already done. So soften those out. So we just want to give some illusion of some clouds, not a whole lot. All right. So can take a little bit of your darker color you use for the background, just a little bit. And you can just do a little bit darker under it, just to give the clouds the sense that they're not all white and puffy, because clouds normally aren't, right? You have dark and you have light. where the light hits it the most. And if you lose it, you can always put it back. All right. All right, so we just want the illusion of some sort of sky background. We're not making perfect clouds. So our focus really needs to be on our gnome. All right, so we're gonna rinse that brush. And we're going to start working on the hat. So if you wanna bring another one of your plates, Set this one aside for when you need it, need the colors again. Let's go ahead and put some red. Some of our primary colors. We'll do a little bit of the blue. Let's do a little bit of green. And how about some pink? Right. We'll bring a little bit back of our yellow back over to our plate. All right, so we've got a good sense of some colors there. So, 
this is where you get to use your imagination and creativity and make your hat any color you want. So if you want really, really bright colors, you don't want to muddy them with too many colors. So let's start with, let's start with some red. And I am using the filbert. You can use any brush you want. I'm going to just start combining colors. If you feel like you need to use a smaller brush, be my guest. So let's just do a little red on either side. All right, so what happens if we add a little yellow to that red? Yellow and the red will make an orange. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, these are all hues, which means they're not very pigmented. So we'll need a little bit of that white to make some of those colors just pop. So let's just put a little white there. All right, so that will dull it up just a bit. So if you want it brighter, put in some more red and a little bit more of your yellow. And then you want to put little yellow there, I'm sorry, orange, if you want to put a little orange there next to it, you want to make a really bright orange. What you can do is add, put a little pink or the magenta and add a little red to that. And that really, really brightens it up. So let's say we want to do another up here. We want to do something really bright. So we'll just. And if you want to do the starbursts, you can. Like the tie dye, it is totally up to you. Your imagination is your only limitation there. So just go ahead and use whatever colors you want. Just be careful not to use opposite colors too much because they will get muddied together. If your brush really good at any point, you feel like you need to change your water, go ahead and do that. So let's just go with the blue. Just take your time and work your way through your hat. If you want to change brushes, you can change. Now we use some green. You can brighten it up some with some yellow. Just add a little bit of white.
okay? Just keep on working through it. If you want to do bursts, you can do that too. While it's still wet, makes a little bit of yellow in there. And that will blend it a little bit. If you don't want it blended, then let the color dry before you go to the next color. I'm just dabbing. Don't worry about that. We'll clean that up later. If it muddies too much, change, rinse your brush. I'm just dabbing color and then just blending a little bit before it completely dries. Some perp, some of the magenta. Just keep working down your colors. Rinse your brush as you change colors. Try some up here. You want to then grab a little bit of yellow. Mix in there. You want to make it a little bit more pointy there, you can. We will be outlining this later on in some black. So I'm going to keep using this brush. Just mixing a bit of the color. Notice how muddy I got that one. I don't want to do that. I don't want to use... I did a blue and red there, and it became a very muddy color. Keep working it. Here, I feel like I need something else there. Grab some blue and see if I can maybe add a little white to brighten it up a little bit. Once it dries, we can come back and do other layers of colors and blending. Let me just grab some magenta. I'm gonna try to blend those two together just a little bit.
All right, let's go down here again. Let's grab some yellow. Yellow and a tiny bit of white. And just tap some colors there so it looks, gives it a little tie-dye effect. Very lightly to blend them in. Let's see what other color do we want. Let's grab some more red, I think. And blend that together just a bit. Grab a little bit more yellow, tad bit of white. So you can see you're picking whatever colors you want, whatever works. You can always go back and tap other colors on it once it's dry. Let's try some of that over here too. Just take your time. The hat is where you can pretty much use your own creativity, pick whatever colors. And at some point, we're gonna come and add some, some gray, dark gray, to give some shaping to the hat, which you may have lost a little bit of. You want to put more color back in there. Let's see. Wipe some of the paint off. We don't want a whole lot. All right. A little bit of yellow there to blend into the green so it's not so harsh. Going over those lines, and I've gone into my pink there a little bit, the magenta, that's fine. All right. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone, and I'm going to let it dry. So while we have those colors, let's go ahead and do our peace sign. You're going to do it the same way we just did the hat. I've changed brushes to the number two round. Make sure to take any excess water and you're gonna do the same way that you've done. Your hat, take your time. Now we probably want to mix the pink with some red to make it very bright and get some more pigments into that so it won't be as translucent. Now, if you feel like you have to get a couple coats on, be my guest. If you all wanna make it one color, that is totally up to you and perfectly fine. This is your painting. At the end of the day, this is your painting. I just give suggestions. Let's try some blue. All right, just go around the mitten there.
How about going into some green? Just take your brush straight from blue, blue and grab some green. We're just going to blend it in. Let me grab some yellow. Make a light green. At any point you feel like you need to pause the video, if you feel like going too fast, be my guest. Take your time. So we have our initial coat there. We can come back and clean it up later if need be. All right, now we're done with the hat and the peace sign for now. All right, so our next step is going to be to take, how about we bring back the other plate we were working on. And we're going to take a little bit of our black. And put it on our plate. So you're going to load up your brush. Just the You actually don't have to add more water to it because your black is more fluid than the other Liquitex Basics colors. So... We're going to make sure it's dark enough. And we're going to start up here. The darkest color. Use whichever brush you feel more comfortable using. So we're doing the undercoat of the beard first. Go around your shoe. You can always clean up your shoe later. If you go over your shoe, that's fine. We can always clean that up when we paint the shoe black. All right, so we're going to Paint the beard. You want to go around your peace sign. So this is all beard here. And switch to your round brush if you need to have more control over your, your paint going onto um, the canvas. I'm going to go around here. Let me just take care of this first and then we'll do the rest because this is the hardest. So you want to make sure you do your little peace sign, the little hole here on the left, little hole on the right. You want to just go ahead and do there. On both sides. Of course, part of the left side of the peace sign is the uh, mustache, but don't worry about that. It's okay. Hope you can see what I'm doing. So I have filled in the inside of the P sign with the dark gray. All right. We're going to 
go down the sides. Don't worry if you've gone over your mustache, that's fine. It's gonna be gray, just a little lighter, so no biggie. I think I need to mix in a little bit more. I have run out. So just mix as you need it. Or just mix enough before you even start. That's fine. It's not going to go to waste because we're still going to be using gray. You didn't match it exactly, no problem. Just go carefully around the mittens. Use your smaller brush if you feel like you need to. All right. So now what we're going to do is add more white to our gray mix to do the mustache. So add some more white, just a couple shades lighter. Just a couple shades lighter. And we're going to paint those in. do the other side. Should have probably mixed a lot more of this gray before I got started or when we started. So you might want to do that. Mix a little bit more than what I have mixed. All right, okay, so while we're here and using black, we're gonna go ahead and rinse our brush just a bit. We're gonna go into straight black. 
and we're going to do our shoes. Pure black. Of course, if you want to do it a different color, that is totally up to you. Now, I may change brushes just to have a little bit more control over doing the detail of the shoe. There we go. That's better. You're not going to overload your brush. Roll the brush on the plate just a little bit to get a fine point. And just take your time. Don't worry too much because a lot of the bottom of the shoe anyway is going to be covered by grass. So don't fret if it doesn't look perfect. You can always... Put a little bit of grass over it, which we'll do anyway, but you can add a little more if you need to. All right, so do our other shoe now. We're almost done with this shoe. Again, don't worry if the bottom doesn't look perfect. It's going to have grass. Oops. Make sure you don't put your hand in paint. I'm not going to worry about that. It's okay. We're going to cover that with grass here in a minute in a few. All right. Okay, so we're going to take a pause and let this dry because we want to be able to paint the beard and not put our hands in paint. So we're going to take a pause and come back when we're dry. So yesterday... As I was recording the entire painting process, I had a little bit of a snafu when I had paused the video and came back and thought I had restarted the video and apparently it did not start recording. So I've had to start another painting, another copy of the painting, and I try to match it as closely as possible of what we had worked on at the start of the video. So if you see it a little bit different, <laughs> that's the reason why. So hopefully things will still be the same as far as the process and we can continue. The only slight difference you will see between this one and the previous one, I did make the background of for the beard the undercoat for the beard a little darker as well as for the mustache. But that is the only difference right now. All right. So we are going to continue painting our beard. Move this out of the way and bring back our gray color. So let me get a little bit more white. So what we're going to do is we are going to be, in case I didn't mention it, we are going to be using our 3 8 angle brush for the beard. 
That's how we're going to do the hairs of the mustache and the beard. So we're going to start with the gray that you already had, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix them up because mine already dried up from earlier. Remember that your black paint is very fluid, and we wanna go a couple, start with a couple shades lighter, and if you need to mix a little water, if it's a little bit um, thick, if the paint is drying out, you can mix a little water. And we'll see in a minute if this is light enough. So what we're going to do is do three layers or so of the beard using the same color but adding white to make it lighter with every coat of wispies, wispy hairs that we add. We will add less of them as we move on to the next coat. You don't wanna cover all the black color or the dark gray color behind it because this is what it's going to give it the three-dimensional look. All right, so let's see if this is going to work good for us. So how you're gonna do this you're going to put the pointy edge to your canvas. You're going to press very lightly and you're gonna start flickering, flicking with your wrist. You don't wanna just move down. Now, if you want it thicker and you wanna do it your way, by all means, be my guest. If you're hearing Gizmo meowing, he just came in the room. All right, so to start, and we're going to start leave a tiny bit around the nose that we're not, we're gonna leave dark. We can always come back and put it back if need be. So we're gonna put our, and I, it's hard for you to see here, but you're gonna put the tip down and we're gonna wisp. Very short strokes to start with. Now, let's see if we can add a little bit more white to that. All right, okay, so here we go. There, that's better. So we're going to start doing wispies in the direction of the mustache. You're not covering all your gray that's under it. All right, so there we have the start of that side. And let's go ahead and do the other side. And you move your canvas as you need it. So I'm sure you guys have small kids to deal with. <laughs> my cat just jumped up on my chair. All right. So... <laughs> Sure, you guys have to deal with children all the time in your home, most likely, or other pets. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so you want to get the inside of your peace symbol also. A little bit went over that. We can clean that up later. All right, get some more paint. Now we're going to go on the outside and go ahead and spill that over to the beard part and we'll just do longer strokes. Don't worry if you go over the shoe. And it's like we are painting in fine hairs. The harder you push your paintbrush down, the thicker they were, they'll be. So if you want them fairly, then, then don't press very hard on your brush and just move your brush with the pointy part down in the direction that you want the hair of the beard to flow. So we'll do the same on the other side. Just small wispies. You can come up here and let it flow. All 
Notice I am not covering up all the dark. We need some of that to show through. That's the whole idea. All right. So I've got my first coat on. Notice I did not go all the way up to the nose and I'm leaving the center part dark. And I'm going to add more white to my gray and make one shade lighter. All right, same thing, but we are not going to do as many of the hairs as we did before. All right, let's do the other side. You can always do some shorter ones there. Do the other side. Short ones up here. And then make them flow. If it's not flowing as much, add a little bit of water to thin out your paint just a little bit. Make sure you don't have a whole lot of paint on there and continue on. Oh, Gizmo's back. He's trying, rubbing against my hand that we're holding my paintbrush. All right. Okay, so we've got two coats and then the last one, you're gonna add even a little bit more white. Feel free to pause the video at any point if you need to catch up. You don't need to go as fast as I am. <laughs> Sorry. Gizmo is still trying to get me to pet him by rubbing against my arm. Continue to do wispies and notice that I'm adding less hairs, less strokes than I did before. It's just final highlights. All right. Now if you want to add a little bit of pure white, you can just add a few of those. Just the feel. All right. So while we have, we can clean this up a little bit. While we have some white or gray on our brush, let's just take this brush and we're gonna do the highlights for the top of the shoe. Just take your brush and, you're, and you can use a small square brush if you wish, the flat brush. And all we're gonna do is lightly press and curve over to do the highlight for the top of the shoe. Don't worry about the bottom sole of the shoe because that is gonna be covered by grass. So we're now done with our beard. You can go ahead and rinse your brush. And dry it off. All right, 
while that is drying, let's go ahead and do some outlining to the hat. We're going to take the small number two round brush. We're going to put it into our black fluid paint, roll it in the paint, and then just roll your brush to bring it to a small point. What we're going to do is outline the hat with this black paint. If your black paint has dried up, you may want to pour a little bit more on the plate and just take your time outlining. Add a little water if you need to also. Shouldn't need to do a whole lot. Remember, you want to lightly use your brush. The lighter you press, the thinner your line. If you have a Posca, black Posca pen, or a black Sharpie, providing that your paint is dry, you can also outline it with that, if that makes it easier for you. That is totally up to you. Like I've said before, at the end of the day, this is your painting, and you can do as much or as little as you wish and do something totally different. It is totally up to you. If you have another brush at home that you prefer to use for detailing, be my guest. This may not be the most optimal as using it as a liner. So um, if you want to use something you have at home, that is great, great also. Whatever works for you guys. If you feel like you need to turn your canvas as you're working, please do. That way you are turning the canvas and not just contorting your body into different shapes just because um, you want to keep the painting flat or on the side. If you want to lift it up, that works too. I'm just keeping it flat because that's the way that um, I can get you guys to see what I'm doing. And I know that the camera angle may not always be appropriate for you to see everything I'm doing in detail, but I hope that um, I'm able to convey the most important parts and as I'm doing it, try to explain the process I'm going through in de as much detail as I can. All right. All right, so the other thing that I did that um, I should have stopped, but I think it's easy enough. The mittens. I had gone ahead and painted the mittens. What I did was use cerulean blue that I get, have given you in your kit and added a little bit of the brown to make a dark color. And here in a minute we'll come back and um, do highlights to it. All right, so what we're going to do now is paint in the nose. The nose is fairly easy. We are going to take 
the other plate that we have our colors in. And you can use either the small detail brush. Just make sure you have rinsed it really good. Make sure to clean or replace your water as needed so it's not too muddy. We are going to use the small, I personally am going to use the, the small flat brush. We're going to mix a little white, tiny little bit of yellow, and a teeny, teeny bit of red, just a little bit. So the yellow will tone it down a little bit, give it a bit of a skin color, and a little bit of red. So white, a tiny bit of yellow to tone it down, and a tiny bit of red. So there you go, that's the color that I've mixed up for the nose. Add a little bit of water if need to so that your paint flows and we are going to paint the nose in. If you want to use the round brush, be my guest. Whatever brush gets the job done for you in the easiest way possible. All right, so once we have put the nose in, you're gonna take a little bit of red, mix a little bit more red into that, and we are going to just paint the bottom part of the nose a little sweep to give it some color at the bottom. I don't know if you can appreciate or see that, so let me put a little bit more red in mine so it shows up on screen. I don't think it's showing up very well. So this is gonna be a little bit more exaggerated than needs to be. And then we are going to rinse our brush and grab a little bit of white, just a little bit. And we're going to do a little sweep at the top for the highlight of the nose. Oops, that didn't go as planned. All right. All right, there we go. If you lose too much of the red, you can come back and put some more in. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on the grass. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. All right, so what we're going to do to work on the grass, we are going to do the underpainting for the grass, which is going to be very rough and not fancy at all. And then we need to let that dry. So to do the bottom part of the grass, we're gonna take, we're gonna make a dark green by taking some green, a little bit of brown, and mixing those together, green and brown. I have a little doggy hair there. All right, so we're, I'm using the number 14 flat brush. And now what we're gonna do is just paint in very roughly the undercoat of our grass and I need to grab a little bit more water because it's very very thick you want to probably do the sides as well and the bottom it doesn't have to be fancy you 
And I'm coming up about a couple inches up to right under the shoe. We won't worry about, um, you can go over the shoe just a little bit if you wish. I am just dabbing to add color. I am not worrying too much how that paint is going on because most of it you're not going to be able to see anyway. Just a little bit more brown into it. A little water. All right, here we go. Okay, we're going to let that dry for now. We want that undercoat of the grass to dry. So while that is going on, and very carefully making sure that we don't put our hands in that green, let's go ahead and finish highlighting the gloves. So what I did here, so that was cerulean blue with a little um, brown. And now I'm going to add a little bit of white to that blue. And we are going to basically add highlights. So where there is a dark, where there's always some light and that's what's gonna help it pop. So I haven't added a whole lot of, let me add a little bit more white. There's not a whole lot of um, paint on that brush because it's almost like dry brushing. We don't want to cover all the paint. So here we had the thumb. I'm just going to highlight the thumb there. And then I am just going to take my lighter color and just sweep it in the motion or the direction of the shape of the glove and do the same on the other side. All right. You can have made this glove any color that you wanted. All right. So we're still waiting on that to dry. So what we're going to do is take our iridescent colors and let's highlight and embellish our hat and our peace sign with it. Let me just put this plate aside for a minute. And we're gonna take, we should have gotten three colors or so of um, irid Pibio iridescent paint. And it doesn't take a whole lot. So you probably did not get a whole lot of it. All right, there we go. So I've got given you green, blue, and orange. And we are going to take the small flat brush make sure that it is clean and dry and now you're going to go into your paint and if you feel like you need a tiny little bit of water just barely wet the tip of your bristles and you're going to start just adding some pizzazz highlights with it And it's going to start popping. 
So you're not trying to paint all over it. You're just adding some highlights to it. Just dab those colors over. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't forget to do your peace sign as well. All right, I'll go ahead and bring some my brush and go with the next color. And you don't necessarily just have to go over greens and whatnot. This actually, if it's thin enough, will just give it that sheen and make, um, make it iridescent. I love, love these paints. They are not the cheapest. I will admit that. However, they just make everything just pop. Okay, I'm going to do the green here. And you can go right over the yellow just to make it pop. And go over your yellows just dab a little bit not a whole lot you don't want to change the color just dab here and there all right go over the blue you can know <clears throat> you can see as you're doing this it does not take much paint at all all right let me go over the blue in the peace sign, then over the hat. All right. And might as well do a tiny little bit on the gloves. Just on the tips of the mittens. Why did I call it glove? All right. Okay. So the other thing we can do is start cleaning up a little of the black if you need to. This is the time, let me go ahead and put this aside, bring back my paint, my black paint, and start cleaning up. Go over the parts that you think you need to go over, but maybe then get good coverage. The other thing you want to do is... All right, this is much better. My black paint had been out a little while. All right. So you don't want to bring more paint. You don't want to bring out more paint than you needed to. because it will dry out. So always bring out just enough paint to get you going and you can always go and get more. That way you don't waste paint and it doesn't dry out. So what I'm doing is just cleaning up my black edges, putting back a little bit more dark to make things pop a bit more. Do some outlining of your peace sign to clean the edges and make 
hip hop a bit more, putting back your dark color, your shadows. You need to clean up your gloves. You can also outline around the glove, which will, it's good anyway, because it'll add some more depth. It'll add the definition back. Clean it up a bit. All right. Just take your time. Just do some cleaning up. This will add the shadows back to the inside of your peace sign. All right. Round the nose just a little bit. I think that is, oops, missed a little spot. Look at there. Around the hat. Let's add a little bit more shadow here. A little bit of an outline. I think I'm done with the hat and everything else looks good. So let's talk about the next layer of grass. We're gonna go back, bring back our other colors and we're gonna go back to our angle brush. And what we're going to do is add a lot more yellow to our green. You might want to get some fresh green, add a lot of yellow to it. So we're not only going to add yellow to that, we're also going to go into white. And as you can see, and I've always said, titanium white, adding it to any color will make it really pop. So if the color is transparent, add a tiny bit of white. Don't add a whole lot because it will dull it. All right, so the same concept we did with the beard or in the mustache. We're going to load the brush and we're going to do blades of grass by going on the sharpened edge to the bottom and just start flicking. Now, I think that's a little too light. Let's add a little bit more green to that. We can always add highlights later. So let's tone that down a little bit more. So you can see it where the blue is. And you're going to do very small crisscrosses, blades of grass that are not uniform. You don't want everything in one shape going the same direction because it will not look natural. We're look, doing going for a very very uncut grass, if you will. I probably could have gone a little higher with the um, bottom part of my grass. Just trying to get the shade a little darker. Taking most of that paint off my brush. All right, let's... Go back again. That's better. Okay, and you're going to flick right over the shoe. And you're going to go all the way across and build up your grass. Small blades, longer blades. Just keep going, adding your blades of grass, short ones, long ones, wispies. Don't press too hard or they will be very thick. There. All 
All right. So for the last bit, then I'm going to make it lighter. Add more white. And we are just going to add a few highlights to that grass. Not very many, just a few. Now, if you wanted to have done the background of the grass a little higher, that way these blades would show up a little better. You can do that as well. So there's our grass. Now the last touch we're going to do is to add the flowers. And we're going to call these wild flowers. They're hints of flowers. I am going to use my flat brush, my flat small brush. And the first color I'm going to do is go into some of this pink. You can add a little bit of white to it. So the magenta, sorry, add a little bit of white so you can see the color. And all you're going to do is take your brush and you're going to turn it on its side and you're just going to do press, press and press to do petals, just small petals. They're not perfect flowers at all. Press like little teardrops. They can be any shape you want. They're just hints of flower. I'm gonna do the same with yellow. Let's do yellow, pull some yellow aside and a little bit of white mixed in so you can see the yellow or else it will be too translucent and you will not be able to see them. And you can just do whatever shapes of flowers. They're just giving the illusion of little wildflowers here and there. They don't have to be much of anything, honestly. If you wanna do little daisies, Use the little brush and you can do that as well. And um, any tiny little cute flower you'd like to do. And the last color I'm going to do is add a little white. And all I'm gonna do is just add little hints of baby's breath or something in there. Not a whole lot, just give an indication that it's spring and there are flowers. All right. Well, I think we are done for real this time. We forgot to add the birds. In the sky. Let's go ahead and go back to our detail, our small um, round brush, and we're going to go into our black paint. Move palettes around. And to do your birds, it's very easy. So you're going to do a half circle and another half circle, and then just make a dot there at the bottom. Half circle, little half circle. Make them as small or as large as you want, as many or as little, or you can leave them out all together. It is totally up to you. There we go. All right. Now I think we have completed. If you have any questions, please let me know. You are welcome to keep the brushes 
I will consider that included as part of your registration fee that you've paid for our face-to-face -face event. If you have any questions, please post in comments or send me a, a message. And I look forward to painting with you guys again, hopefully in person. But look out for any other virtual events that I may be posting. I would love to be able to engage with you while we're all going through this together. Thank you so much for your patience and stay safe and hope to see you guys soon. Bye.